Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. They usually have to say it twice. You'll forgive me, I have a little laryngitis, but that wasn't going to keep me away from the microphone. Uh, I, my name is Joe Bova. I'm the district leader of the 49th Assembly District. Uh, I'm joined by my female colleague, Victoria Kelly, also the district leader of the 49th Assembly District. We will be ha handing off the microphone back and forth. So, I hope you all know why you're here today. If you don't know, let me say, we are here today to make history. We are here today to launch the campaign of Brooklyn's first Asian American public electorate. who wears many hats in our community. She's a member of our local District 20 education panel. She serves as chief of staff uh, to Assemblyman Abadi, which gives her so many credentials, because to work for Peter is a supernatural thing. So she's, uh, she's well-versed in that. And most importantly, she is the president of the Stars and Stripes Democratic Club. And, and we are so happy to have her here uh, and to launch the campaign right out of our clubhouse uh, because she has been a pillar not only of this organization but of our community in general. So let's have a round of applause for Ewan Chu, our next state senator. So good morning, everybody. Um, I wrote some remarks because I get nervous when I public speak, but um, I'm so excited to be here today. I'm Tori Kelly, the district leader of the 49th Assembly District. I've had the privilege to know and work with Iwen for almost a decade. And um, anyone who knows her knows she's a real force of nature, a dedicated wife, mother, and friend. But she's also equally devoted to this community. For many of us, today, uh, today's announcement has been uh, greatly anticipated for many years. We've seen Iwen become a community leader in Southern Brooklyn. She's done great work in the Assembly, the CEC, the Community Board, and as Joe mentioned, she's the first Asian American president of this club. Um, we've all waited for the day that she would run for office, and I'm proud and I'm thrilled to say, today is that day. Woo! Before we hear from her, we're gonna hear from a lot of our friends here in this room, people that you're no stranger to. Um, a good friend of ours, a good friend of this club, many of you guys know him. Please welcome State Senator John Liu. Andrew Gennardis and I made a deal. He, he said I'd go first because I'm older. That's right. <laughs> and anyway, I'm so happy. Yay. I'm so proud of this day. Our district leader said it so well, Joe Fova, Tori Kelly, they, you know, they have been working alongside Ewen for many years now as she was club president. Uh, this is, you know, Ewen is no stranger to any of us. She's been around for a long time. I mean, you used to be younger. All right, all right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, for so many years, Ewen was in the community reporting, kicking our butts as a journalist, holding us accountable, and she knew everything that was happening in this community. And then she made the leap and started working for Assemblymember Abate and has been running his office now for, I lost track of how many years because it's been a long time. And in that job, 10 years, see, we're not as spring chickens anymore. <laughs> but the 10 years of really understanding not only the community, but now understanding how government work, works and how to get things done. And so she's now, uh, you know, she's, she became a wife to uh, her better half. We, we now have to, we always say they're the better half. That's right. And, and uh, where's, and me, and oh my God, I, I didn't even recognize Mia for a second. Holy moly. I knew Mia since she was, she was sitting this big. <laughs> Uh, and so uh, she's been all this time a wife, a mother, 
as well as, as Tori mentioned, uh, a, a person of the community. And so, you know, this is a really proud day for all of us. We have been waiting for this for a long time. We've been right. waiting for Irene or Ewen to announce her candidacy for something, anything, because we're going to support her. And this year we have a golden opportunity. Yes. A golden opportunity with this new state senate district created right here in Brooklyn. She's going to be working alongside Andrew. She's going to double the Chinese caucus in the state senate. I get to be the chairman of that caucus because I'm older. But anyway, let's give it up. Well, she's not going to talk yet, but we are so excited to be at this historic announcement. Ewen Chen is Ewen Chu is going to make us proud as a state senator, the first Asian American elected here in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and really she's going to hit the ground running because she already knows what it takes to do the job and to do the job very very well. Ewen Chu, the state senate. Ewen, 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 Ewen. Thank you, Senator. <clears throat> Our next speaker is also a member of the State Senate who has worked with Irene uh, since his election to the Senate. I give you Senator Andrew Gennardis. Thank you so much, Joe. I cannot be more excited to stand here with this group of leaders and with this group of leaders in support of my good friend, Ewen Chu, for the New York State Senate. Let's give it up for her. Not only, we all know, we all know what Irene has done, what Ewan has done throughout her career, throughout her life here in Brooklyn. We know the work she's done as a journalist, working with this club, working with this element of body, all the issues she knows, every, but she is just so perfectly suited for this responsibility. And it is a responsibility, I'm warning you, because we all, this is a big responsibility to be the voice of this community up in Albany is so incredibly important, not only because of where we've come from and what we're going through, but because of where we're about to head to next. Irene understands the needs and concerns of everyone in this community. And while we are incredibly excited and proud that she will be the first Asian American elected in government from Brooklyn, we also know that she speaks for not just the Asian community. Her story allows her to speak for all immigrants who come to this country in search of a better life, for their slice of the American pie, for their slice of the American dream, for everyone that's come here and who brought their families here to have a chance to build a life here. Ewen now speaks for them because she's lived that life. I can think of no better experience or history to equip somebody to go to Albany and to fight day in and day out on behalf of the families of this district, of this community, of this borough, and of this city than my good friend Ewen Chu. Woo! And I am going to do, and we are all going to do, and we are all going to do everything we can to make sure that we get her up to Albany so she can fight alongside me, John, Ron, and everyone, and Peter, what's Peter? Peter. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone that you have trusted to send to Albany to fight on your behalf. Because this is an incredibly powerful team. And it's only gonna get better, and stronger, and more impactful when we have Ewen there standing alongside us. So. I'm so excited for you. I'm so happy for you. This day could not have come sooner. And all I can say is, after we finish this rally, we all have a lot of work to do to get her up there, right? Yeah. Right? All right, let's go. Thank you, Senator. I'd like to, uh, one of the, uh, the, the other benefits of reapportionment, besides creating this seat for, uh, for, for Irene uh, Ewen, uh, is that we gained more real estate, if you will, for our congressmen. A lot uh, previously, we were hooked up with Staten Island and, uh, and, and their congressmen, but 
gratefully and thankfully, uh, we now are getting more of Congressman Kerry Nadler to represent more of the 49th. So I give you now our good friend, Congressman Kerry Nadler. Thank you very much, Ben. It's a real pleasure to be here today to launch the candidacy of Ewen Chu. Not only will she be the, uh, well, she'll be the second Asian in the state Senate, she'll be the only Asian in the state Senate from my congressional district. We have one assembly woman, uh, Yolene New, who is running for the state Senate in a primary. Um, but but uh, Irene joins a very exclusive club. But because of her qualifications, because all the years she worked as a journalist, because of all the years she worked in Peter Abadi's office, handling the constituent complaints, getting to know the community better, she is supremely well qualified for being senator. And I am very proud to support her candidacy and to endorse her, and I will do everything I can to see that uh, she is elected. Uh, you know, you never take an election for granted. You never take an election for granted. I once lost an election by 12 votes. So you have to make sure of every vote, you have to make sure that every one of your friends, that everybody knows about the election and knows that they should vote for Yuen Chu. Thank you, okay. Thank you, Congressman. I want to give a few, I want to recognize a few other folks who are here today. Um, who are supporting Iwen. Um, Iwen. Maggie Gu is here. Hey. Ray Wang, Larry Zhao, uh, Richard Moy, um, Zong Li Liang, Angel Wu, Paul Lee, Simon Lee, and we're going to recognize a bunch more for folks, but I'm just going to go for those for now uh, because this room is packed with so many people supporting her. Um, who are also, you know, equally uh, community uh, organizers and activists. Um, next, speaking of community leaders, I want to introduce um, the district leader, the female district leader, my colleague, uh, in the 47th Assembly District, uh, who many of you know as well, Nancy Tong. Good morning, everyone. Morning. I am so happy to be here to support Irene, you and you. You know, a, a couple weeks ago, she calls me up. She said, Nancy, you know I'm running for the Senate seat. Will you be supporting me? I said to Irene, Irene, you know if you're going to run, you know there's a lot of hard work in that. As a through my experience, when I ran, there were seven months that I did not have a meal at home. Everything was done in my club. Once I finish what I need to do at the club, I go home, I still need to work. But most importantly, after you do all this hard work, you go home, you have a shoulder to lean on. I said this to Irene. Irene said, Nancy, no problem. I know you have your husband's support. That's very, very important. Because after a day's work, you're so tired, you go home, you want to lean on someone. So I know your better half is supporting you. We should give him a clap on the As we all know, Irene works with Pia Abadi for many, many years, and she's the chief of staff. She knows what it takes. She sees constituents, I'm sure, when there are problems. She dealt with it. She is so experienced, so qualified. Now, with this new district that's created, the Senate district, you know, we do have lack of representation, which is very, very important. So when she tells me she's running, I was so happy for her. And that today, look at all the supporters that are here. We all want to elect Irene so that she will get that seat and you will be the first Asian elected government position in Brooklyn. So this, 
she will be in history. There's a lot of hard work. We need everybody's help. Because I myself think, because I know a lot of people will be running for this seat, but to me, Iron Chu will be the best qualified candidate. Why is she the best candidate qualified? I say because she's been in this business for so many years, she knows how it works, versus for someone who have not worked in government or don't know how it works and comes in. Yay. So I think Irene Chu is the best qualified candidate and we all so support her. Am I right or am I wrong? So let me just say this in Chinese. I hope you all can continue to support Our next speaker uh, had, an example, had been an example of what a respected jurist should be. She's a retired Supreme Court judge from Manhattan, and I believe the first Asian American yeah. Supreme Court judge elected Female. in Manhattan. Female. 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 So I give you now Judge Doris Ling Kong. It is such a pleasure to be here, and let me say, we waited a long, long time for this. And when I first met Ivan, many, many years ago, I said, someday you need to run for office. And that someday is now. And having been a judge for about 25 years, I've done no endorsements, right? And so when I retired about a year and a half, two years ago, I have been very, very selective. I've selected one other candidate, and that person won. And what do I look for? I look for somebody who's a unifier, somebody who has worked on issues that will unify communities. So let's look at those issues. Education. Education is something that we want for our children. Quality, safe education doesn't matter which community you come from. And Iwin has worked on those issues for everyone. What other issues? Healthcare. Healthcare is an issue that is so important to us, to our grandparents, to our parents, to ourselves, to our children. She has worked on those issues for everyone. Safety. Safety is so important, especially now, when there's such divisiveness and people are fighting each other and people getting attacked, we need people who unify all of our communities and who put public safety very, very important. And Ewen, Irene, has worked on those issues. So she is a unifier. As someone who grew up in the public schools of Brooklyn, I know that having representation is very, very important. And there's a secret here. I actually moved into Manhattan to run for judge. I could not run from Brooklyn. There were no Asian American representat representation here who would actually help me with my candidacy. Not that there was in Manhattan, but at least there was a recognized group there. There was a Chinatown. And so representation is very, very important. But somebody who unifies and represents, that's the person we want. And we have found that person in Ewen, Irene Chu, and so we hope we will see her at her induction shortly. She needs all of your help and we will be there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to recognize a few more folks. We're going to go through it. Um, Don Lee is here. Stephanie Wong. 
Dr. Tim Law, Frank Yi, Eric Chan, Muang Zhang. Uh, and we will have a, a lot more coming. Also, Randy Pierce from the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce yeah, is right in front row. How can I forget him? Um, next up, I'd like to introduce someone who, again, is no no stranger to this club and no stranger to the community, former Councilman Vincent Gentile. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, I forgot how exciting a kickoff can be, right? This is great. I really enjoy it. And we're going to be back here on June 28th on primary night to have even a bigger, bigger celebration, correct? So, you know, when you look in the course of events, uh, there are times where you can call a certain event historic, right? And this is one of those times. This is a historic time, an historic event, where we create a new Senate district with a plurality of Asian Americans in that district. It's historic, and we appreciate that, but there are, there are times when the people are not ready to meet that historic event. But that's not the case here. The case here is that we, as a club, as the Stars and Stripes, as a community, we are ready to meet this historic time of a new Senate district because uh, Ewan is ready to meet that historic event and that challenge. And so she's ready and we are ready. So I want to thank the Stars and Stripes Club for their leadership in, in, uh, in helping uh, Ewen get to this point because uh, she's worked with the club for years and years and years. She's now worked with Assemblyman Peter Abadi in government and she's worked, as you've heard, with the CEC 20, with Community Board 11, with Health Choices and, and, and uh, other groups. And she's in her, her school, her PTA, as a parent uh, in, in the public school system. Wherever you look, I, uh, Ewen has been there. Ewen has worked hard. And because she has worked hard, she is now ready. She is now ready to accept this challenge and meet this historic uh, uh, event of a new Senate district, which is plurality of uh, Asian Americans. And so I want to be part of this. I want to uh, say to her that not only is she ready, but she has the character. She has the common sense to be a great state senator. And you know, we need common sense and good character in public officials, as many as we can get. And to add uh, Ewen to that, that group will be a real great honor and a real compliment to all of you. So let's work together uh, so that we come back here on June 28th. We'll do some work before that, but we'll come back here on June 28th and proclaim Ewen Chun the winner of the state senate nomination here. Thank you. Another speaker who is a good friend of Ewan's, no stranger to our community uh, and to this club in particular, but he represents uh, so much of what is good about Brooklyn, council member Justin Brennan. Thank you, Joe. This is, uh, this is a really big deal today. Um, it, not so much for the mucky mucks behind me, but, but for all the people in this room, right? When you look at the support that Ewen has, uh, it's because she's done the work, right? You, a lot of times when you have an opportunity, to, there's a new seat or whatever it is, or a seat opens up, suddenly people come out of the woodwork. You never heard of these people. That's not the case here. Ewen has been doing the work, right? I met her, I think, first over 10 years ago. People don't know. When she, before she started working for Peter Abadi, she had a, uh, her hair was black. <laughs> um, but she's done the work. What a lot of us have in common up here uh, on this side is that we were all staffers. And you don't have to be a staffer to run for office. But it does, in the times that we have right now where we need experienced leaders who can hit the ground running on day one, it certainly helps to have been a staffer, to know the ropes, to know who to call to get things done, to know people in the community. And that's why I say, when I look out today at everyone that's here, 
I mean, this is impressive. I hope there, there's a designated survivor because we have the entire, <laughs> we have the entire Asian community here, the representation here of all these different nonprofits that are really the, the, the fabric of this community. And the fact that you're all here today supporting you when, uh, uh, as she announces her candidacy is a really, really big deal and something that us as elected officials do not take for granted because you guys are the ones that are gonna make this happen. And, and having you guys here on a day like this and supporting her from day one is so important and that's what's gonna get her uh, across the finish line. So I am so proud to support you when it's a no brainer. She called me and asked me, I said, shut up, call somebody else. <laughs> She's done the work, she knows how to get things done. She's gonna fight like hell for everybody. Like the judge said, like my, like my mentor Vinnie Gentili said, not just about representing the Asian community, it's about bringing people together. Representation matters, but at a time like this, Bringing people together is truly, truly what matters, and I win is going to get that done. So I'm proud to support her. Now let's get her over the finish line. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. All right, I'm going to um, acknowledge a few more folks before I introduce our next speaker. Uh, Mikey Bove is here from the NIA and the Sanitation Union. Um, Benny Lynn, Paul Mack, uh, Rosita Chan. Um, and, we'll, and Sunny Moy, Zhang Lin, Steve May, Kimo Chen, um, and Jin Rong Zen, and then a few more. We'll, 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 we have more people here. Justin's right, we should have had a dedicated su a survivor because everyone's here. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce uh, Assemblyman Steve Simberwitz. Yes, yeah, still good morning. Um, <laughs> One of the benefits of, uh, of redistricting this year is the fact that we have this new Asian district that cuts into the 49, uh, 45th Assembly District, which is the district that I represent. The Asian community is the fastest growing immigrant community in all of Brooklyn. And I am proud to represent so many and I am so proud to be on Irene's team as the new state senator. Some of you know that I spend a lot of time with Peter Abadi up in Albany. A lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is starting to question what a lot of time is. But when we talk about the community, which is so important to Peter, when issues come up, it's always Call Irene. Let me call Irene. Irene would know the answer. She has done this for 10 years, and she really has gained the experience. She understands what the community is. I am proud to stand here before you and say I proudly endorse Irene. She will be a terrific state legislator, and I can't wait to work with her. So I read the best of luck, and I look forward to working with you. And now I'd like to bring up another colleague of Assemblymember Simba Whitson Abadi, Assemblymember Ron Kim. All right, Brooklyn! Good morning, everyone, and good afternoon. Uh, it, you know, I'll be honest, it takes a lot for me these days with three young daughters to leave Flushing on a weekend, but I did not want to miss this kickoff because I am such a big fan of Irene and the work that she has done, and I wanted to see all the leaders, all of our trailblazers that have put us, put people like me in office over the years. A quick story, 20 years ago, I walked into this man's office um, as a recent college grad um, with the list of complaints, and then within weeks, I was working for him, um, and I was resolving all these quality of life issues, but over the years, I saw him in action in city council. I'm like, why is this guy holding like five times more committee meetings and like working 10 times harder than the other council members. And I realized he was the first and only Asian and he felt uh, passionate and he felt motivated. He needed to work that many times harder. 
for the most underrepresented community in the city of New York. But now, in 20 years, we have Asian electives running everywhere, and this will be the first Asian American person to be winning the state senate for Brooklyn. Um, but Irene is not just about being an Asian American. She represents the values of all working class families throughout the state of New York. She came to this country just like many of us with nothing in their pocket. This isn't just the typical American dream. This is actually very important for the Democratic Party. We forgot how to reward hardworking immigrant communities. There's communities that want to send their kids to better schools, communities that want to start mom and pop stores, communities that want to save and want a better future. This is the New York City immigrant story, and the left and Democratic Party must do a better job representing those values, and that's why I'm here, because Irene represents those values, and we're gonna win next couple of months. Thank you. I want to also recognize Josephine Beckman from the Community Board is here. Um, we also, I also want to thank uh, Wei Chan is here. She's been giving me all these posters, so I don't forget. I really want to thank her for her help with this. But so we also are joined by um, Detective Wenjin Liu's parents are here. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, Stephen Chen is here as well. Wei Guang Wu, Hua Liang. Um, and we also have some photographers here who have been really great. I'm sure you've seen them. Susan, Mr. Lee, and Chong. Um, and I really am, I hope I did not uh, forget anyone. Thank you all so much for being here. It means so much, I know, to, to everyone. So um, I have the honor of introducing uh, the next speaker, um, who I also worked for for a very long time, and who I consider to be, you know, just an amazing person, amazing elected official who taught me a lot. Um, someone in Peter Body. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, it's not today is not only the beginning of a new year. It's going to be the beginning of a new era. You know, especially in the state senate and the state legislature. Uh, I'm going to call you Irene. I win. I win sounds like I won. <laughs> Which is it? So we're going to do a post. I win, and you vote. I win, and you buy, and you win. So we're going to do that. But I have to tell you, when I first heard that they might be creating a, a Senate district and it would be an Asian district, I knew what was going to happen. I knew Irene was going to run, and I have to tell you, I was thrilled, and I was a little sad because I knew I'd be losing her. But then I talked, sat around, thought a little bit, and I said, no, I'm not going to be losing her. I'm going to have a partner in the state legislature. And that's who we're going to be. We're going to be partners in there. Yeah. Ten years ago, when redistricting happened, and I picked up the whole area of Sunset Park, you know, I knew some people there, but not as many as here today, or the many more that are not here today, and we're going to find out why they're not here. And they all should be here today supporting Irene. But for 10 years, we worked together. Irene was the heart and soul that got me there, and I understood what she was doing. And I wanted to copy her, how she cared about our community. And over those 10 years, I've learned so much of the community that now I love and feel like family to that community. So with Irene coming up to Albany, working and helping the community as a team, we're just going to get a lot more done. It's going to be a better time. We can work as a team with my other colleagues that represent the surrounding areas. And I have to tell you, just look around. You don't see that many elected officials come to an event like this. Everyone's here. And there are two colleagues, Bill Colton and Bobby Carroll, who are going to do other events at another time. We have everyone in the community here supporting Irene, which is a great, just, I don't know how great that is to say, Irene, for you to see this. Uh, swell of support from the whole community. But the key is now we have to get, as a staff person first, as Justin said, now we have to get out there and work. If there's going to be a primary, it won't be an easy primary. We have to get out there and make sure, starting with signatures, right? Getting on the ballot, making sure that we talk to our neighbors and friends in the community, letting them know that Irene is running. You know, letting them know so we can have a big celebration, you know, on June 28th, and then even a bigger celebration on November 2nd after the election. But there are going to be two tough elections uh, out there right now, and we got to be there. But again, I don't know how to say how proud I am 
what Irene has done for me in this community over the years. Without her, I have two other staff people back there, Victoria and Lisa are back there, and we the three of them over there work together. Irene running the show uh, in the community and in the district office. As so many of my colleagues said, there's no one better qualified to come in and represent this community. I, I don't know why anyone would think of running. It's like an insult to the community almost <laughs> that they, they want to run when they have Irene there to represent this community. So, Irene, come up here. You know, Woo! it's my pleasure. The next state senator from Brooklyn, Irene. Woo! All right. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, everyone. 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 I know you've been waiting for this moment for a very, very long time. I know it. We've been waiting. So first, I need to take a deep breath, all right? They're great speech. They're great official. They represent well. I'm a fast learner. I can pick it up, right? So first, I would like to thank my campaign team. There are four extreme, incredible ladies who helped me to put this today possible, all right? So I will text them in the middle of the night and they always got me back for like different campaign ideas, different things, different things we need to put it up today. Thank you so much, Wei, Lisa, Jen, and Tori. Thank you. And I want to thank Peter for my for being my political mentor. And he is a great father figure for me. I need to thank my family, Tony and Mia, for being a great full backup. In case you don't know, I don't have much time to cook anymore. <laughs> and Tony's cooking skill being improved a lot. <laughs> And now let me formally introduce myself to you. My name is Ewan Chu, I-W-E-N-C-H-U. I know you know me by Irene. You can still call me Irene. I am Irene. But I just want to say Ewan is my Chinese name. And I'm proud to run for this office with this name because I know for Brooklyn, this name will mean so much for my Asian community. Yeah. ago, I came to New York with a two piece of luggage, all by myself. I hop on the taxi, and honestly, I have the address, but I have no clue where I'm going. Everything's brand new to me. I became an immigrant. After I got my master's degree in sociology from Brooklyn College, I got a job as a local news reporter. And I remember the first day at work, there was a tornado hit Bay Ridge and Sunset Park, and that was 2007. There were over 40 buildings destroyed and hundreds of families got displaced. That was my first time experiencing how government and local organizations can help. And then later on, through that job, I realized our immigrant community needs a lot of help because language barrier is an invisible barricade for them, seeking for help. They, they have no way to turn. And that's why later I joined Peter's office and hopefully I can shorten the gap in between immigrant community and the government and I can offer more help. I later on got involved in politics in political campaign and many community work because I know by doing this, our voice can be heard. And look at now, look at here. All the like, official office, they all have Asian and Chinese speaking staff. We got help. They are helping us. They can hear us now. And I re always remember I have those senior constituents come into Peter's office, they asking for help and they told me now they feel so safe because they know where to go when they need help. They can come in and just ask. I know this is not enough. An immigrant family can, feel, can face all different kinds of challenges in life. And that's why I joined CEC 
community board. I become a NYPD community partner. I join uh, Beyond the Board with a, a local healthcare center. I want to offer my help every way I can because I know by putting myself out there, I can help the community. By putting myself out there, they can hear us. They can understand us. So, is this enough? I think we're still one step short. And this is why I'm here today, announcing to run for New York State Senate. <laughs> so that I can make sure everyone has a seat at the table, every voice can be heard. And I can bring back more needed service for the, for the community I hope to represent. I believe our communities share the same dreams, share the same vision for our city that is inclusive, welcoming, safe, and prosperous for everyone. I will do everything I can to lift up everyone and make sure we all have access to upward mobility. Investing in education is our fundamental belief as an immigrant. I still remember when my baby girl, when she was two years old, I took her to the PS176 in the school playground, and she was rolling, crawling under the sun. It's a beautiful, sunny afternoon, and I saw a kid, kids with all different ages. They're smiling, they're playing. You know how lucky I am? I know I'm gonna have a great quality school for her. And that's something I want every parent to feel the same. However, our education system is not immigrant friendly. For a parent who did not grow up here and trying to navigate the system and hoping their kids one day can be better than them, our city education system was trying to take this opportunity away from them. I believe all kids have their potential and that's why I am for expanding K-8 to given talent program so that every student has the opportunity to challenge themselves and prepare themselves. And I know for way too many immigrant families, keeping special high school tests is their only hope to ensure their kids can be able to go to special high school and thrive in life. Instead of, yes, instead of like those immigrant parents working 12 hours a day, living on minimum wage. Because these families that do not have the privilege or social network to support their kids to put out a beautiful portfolio or powerful recommendation letters. We need to keep the test for this family. But that's not enough. Right now, we only have one talented high school, LaGuardia High School. Don't tell me in this beautiful city with a nine million population, we only need 3,000 talent seats. We need to build more talent schools. We need more specialized high schools. I'm an Asian American. I'm gonna tell, I, I, I need to talk about this real problem. Asian hate crime. Last year, the targeting Asian hate crime increased almost 400%. 400%. This is just our region. I cannot let our senior live in fear and be afraid to walk on the street. I cannot let our younger kids to be afraid to walk out and play. When I'm supporting our NYPD to get the resource they deserve so that they can keep us safe and keep them safe, I also believe we need to fix our me mental health system and add more resources so that people can get the help they need instead of being put on a waiting list for a doctor's appointment. Those tragedies are preventable. The communities of South Brooklyn, Windsor Terrace, Kensington, Sunset Park, Diker Heights, Fensonhurst, and Graveson are full of vibrant commercial corridors. Many of them are immigrant-owned small business. They are the reason why New York City is so beautiful and so strong. We need to cut the red tape and help the small business owner to be able to apply for grants more easily and provide language support so that they so that they will know where to get help, not getting a summon of violation. Woo! 
And lastly, a very important part, we need community input. When this government wants to make any major change in our neighborhood, we need to have a seat at the table. Whether it's about the DOT trying to change the traffic pattern or trying to build a homeless shelter, we need to have a seat at the table. And these are the reason why I'm running for New York State Senate, because to my ladies in the house, we need to have a seat at the table. Yeah. To my Asian folks in the house, we need to have a seat at the table. Yeah. And to all my friends from Brooklyn, we will have this seat for on the table. Yeah. Thank you for all your support. I really want, I'm asking for help. Before you walk down, there's posters, pawn cards, there's my face over there. Please, get my name, get my, get my face out on the street. I have an outstanding logo here. People see me, they know me. Get my face out. And if you can, please, please scan the barcode. And see if you're in the district, scan the barcode, you'll find some surprise over there. Because I need your help. Every dollar you chip in, you're helping me to outreach one more voter. And that's how we can win the seat. And if you can, if you can, today, call five of your friends and tell them, my friend, my friend, Yi Wen Shu is running for New York State Senate and we need to get her elect. We need her win. Woo! And you have, you have my words. I will do everything I can to win this one because I know this is my responsibility to win this one for you, you every will. one of you. Thank you. Thank you. <笑>我們華人社區的好朋友今天真的謝謝你們來支持我真的非常謝謝你們需要你們的支持讓我們一起創造歷史創造歷史謝謝<笑><笑><笑>